fantastic participation in today's program. We got to hear from three previous governors. We're going to hear from uh, our current governor right now. It's my pleasure to introduce the Secretary of Commerce. I've gotten to know Brian very well over the last year. He has done a great job in representing Virginia on international trade missions, representing existing businesses that want to expand. And he's put together a great team throughout the Secretariat of Commerce and Trade. And I've had the pleasure of getting to know him. Brian have spent many years with Williams Mullins as a practicing attorney. And uh, what I like so much about his legal practice is that he was working with businesses, understands business, and has brought that experience to this position of Secretary of Commerce and Trade. For purposes of greeting and bringing an introduction, please join me in thanking Secretary Brian Ball and ask him to come forward. Thank you very much, Barry. Appreciate that. And uh, thank you all for having us here today. This is the 70th one of these. Barry and I were talking about it uh, that uh, you've been doing here in, in Richmond. And um, that, that's quite a remarkable track record. And I know that the Chamber and I know VEDP has been involved with it. So it's, it's, it's really quite something. And while we're talking about VEDP, let me just give a brief shout out. Stephen Murray runs a, runs a wonderful operation there. It's been a pleasure for me to get to know and work with him. And Paul Grossman is, is the, is, runs the International Trade Division, and he's the person who makes this go as well. And for those of you who are out there that uh, uh, want to figure out how to do business in other places, uh, I encourage you to, to see uh, Paul and his, uh, or his accomplished staff, because he's got a lot of good folks here today. And um, uh, no, <clears throat> I don't want to offend any uh, previous governors, but I work for a great governor. So <laughs> I'm looking <laughs> I really do. I, uh, I'm a lucky person. I get to, I get to work with uh, our, our current governor uh, every day, and it's been a real joy for me. Um, as far as economic development goes, it's something that is preached every day. Uh, every day we're working on economic development, not just in the, the high-performing areas of Virginia, but also in the areas of Virginia that aren't performing as well. It's very important. Uh, to our governor that, that all of us enjoy economic uh, improvement in, in, in our communities. And um, along with that, we talk a lot about workforce uh, because without the workforce, uh, it's going to be hard to have the economic development uh, that, that we, we need. Um, and and um, our current governor is uh, every bit as competitive as any of his predecessors, and it is our goal. Uh, Virginia, Virginia was at one time the best, considered the best place to do business. Uh, and we've, we've really moved up the rankings nicely. I think we're considered fourth in the country, but I can tell you I work for a governor who wants us back to being the best place to do business in Virginia. So it's a great honor for me to uh, introduce to you our 73rd governor, Ralph S. Norton. Thank you. Please be seated. Well, good afternoon, and I hope everybody's enjoying their lunch, and please continue to eat. Uh, Brian, thank you for the, the kind introduction, and in honor of our, our previous governor, Terry McCulloch, uh, one of the greatest Secretary of Commerce that uh, we've ever seen in the Commonwealth of Virginia. So thank you for the work that you're doing. Also, Todd Haymore, I, that's why I didn't call him the best, because I knew you were uh, at the table, but thank you for, for being here. It's great to see you again. And, uh, thank you for your service to the Commonwealth. And, uh, you know, Brian just said that uh, our Commonwealth is, is doing well, and it's doing well because we've had great leadership over the years. And uh, it's good to see my friend Terry McAuliffe, uh, four years, he, uh, he gave it his all. He, he left us uh, with a $555 million surplus, one of the first times that's ever happened in the history of the Commonwealth. So thank you, Terry McAuliffe, for your leadership. The good news is uh, we had a great reception last night uh, over at the House, and for those of you all that, that came to that, thank you uh, for uh, being there. I, I know a lot of you traveled uh, from your place of business uh, across the Commonwealth. I, I talked to a lot of people last night that were from other states, even people from other countries, so uh, we thank you. And, you know, I was worried last night 
Uh, we were getting a little bit low on our liquor supply over across the street, but now that Governor McCullough uh, is in town, uh, we've, uh, he's assured me that he will restock for us. So uh, we are ready for the, the next party. And I know you had a, a, a round table with uh, the governors uh, this morning, Governor McCullough, Governor Allen, and Governor McDonald. And I, all I hope is after having all three of those in the room, I hope that there's still some oxygen left in this room. So I wanted to uh, thank a couple people before I uh, started with uh, some more formal comments. But uh, first of all, our Secretary of Commerce and, and his uh, department, Brian Ball, we, uh, we're doing a lot of things, a lot of great jobs, announcements. Uh, businesses are growing in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Businesses want to come to Virginia. and. I couldn't be prouder of the work that uh, Brian and his staff are doing. So, Brian, thank you for that. <laughs> Brian already mentioned the VEDP, uh, read by, excuse me, led by Stephen Murray, and uh, what wonderful work he is doing. I don't know if Stephen's in here, but I suspect people from uh, his staff are. So, for all of you at the VEDP, thank you for what you do. Barry Duvall, I've got to uh, say a couple words about. Um, you know, the chamber uh, in Virginia is so, so important. Uh, and a lot of these jobs announcements that occur are, are for large businesses. That's, that's who gets the headlines. But I will tell you that the backbone of our economy are small companies and startup companies. And Barry, the job that you've done for our chamber throughout Virginia, thank you so much for your leadership. Please give Barry a hand. And I believe it was already said this, this morning, but uh, our Port of Virginia is so important to our economy. It's the gateway, especially when we talk about international trade. And so, John Reinhardt, I, I thank you for your leadership. I know you have other members of your staff with you today, but thank you. The port is so important, so keep up the good work over there. And I might add that uh, our airports are, are very important. So uh, we've invested, as you know, uh, in, in Dulles, uh, and, and so good things are happening there. And I, I, I will mention also back to the ports. Uh, we have invested uh, about $350 million in our ports so that we can dredge and widen our channels. Uh, very, very important as we prepare for these ships that are coming through the Panama Canal. So good things are happening in Virginia. I know that you all know uh, how important international trade is for growing Virginia's economy. In 2017, Virginia exports totaled $36 billion, creating more than 320,000 jobs, $18.7 billion in labor income annually, and $2 billion in tax revenue. Virginia's exported products which include manufactured and ag agriculture products, as well as information and technology services, went to 214 countries last year. While the majority of Virginia's exports will come from the Commonwealth's metropolitan areas, exports represent a greater share of the local economy in many other regions of the state. More than 60% of the Commonwealth's total exports originate in Hampton Roads, Northern Virginia, and Richmond. We also measure export intensity, the percentage of the local economy that is represented by exported products. Our export intensity is highest not in these urban areas, but in Bristol, Blacksburg, Southwest Virginia as a whole, and Winchester. In these areas, exports represent more than 15% of the local economy compared to 7.8% for Virginia as a whole. The bulk of economic growth is occurring outside the U.S. because 95% of consumers do not live in the United States. Between 2015 and 2020, 81% of global economic growth will occur outside of the U.S. Here in Virginia, we are extremely fortunate to have a best-in-class international trade program. The Commonwealth stands out among states in the U.S. because we have made an invested commitment to global trade for more than 30 years. The Port of Virginia continues to serve as an invaluable asset to businesses around the Commonwealth. 
the port set a new annual record for container cargo volume, having handled more than 2.84 million 20-foot equivalent units, or TEUs, a 7% increase over last year's total. So again, congratulations. Virginia has implemented and maintained innovative export programs that are widely considered best practice in the United States. The Virginia Leaders in Export Trade, also known as Valet, program implemented by the Virginia Economic Development Partnership serves 50 companies each year, and the Global Defense Program is the nation's first program to assist defense companies to go international. In fiscal year 2018, VEDP served 330 companies in its international programs and took 157 companies on trade missions to 22 countries. Today, there are 57 companies from rural Virginia areas enrolled in VEDP international trade programs. The Virginia Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services, VDAC's Office of International Marketing continually promotes Virginia agriculture around the globe, connecting producers with export opportunities and helping those producers assess market potential, understand international regulations, identify buyers, and educate them about product-specific export programs and marketing events. From 2003 to 2017, Virginia agriculture and forestry exports grew by an astounding 85%. In fact, nearly 50,000 jobs are supported by agriculture and forestry exports. We are here today to celebrate the accomplish accomplishments of all Virginia businesses who have or are planning to grow their sales through exporting. It is now my honor to present the Governor's Award for Excellence in International Trade to a rural Virginia company that has made many accomplishments. Pyatt Boone Electronics, also known as PBE, was established in March of 1971 to supply the U.S. coal mining industry with the most technologically advanced communication and monitoring systems available. PBE Group graduated from Virginia's Go Global with Coal and Energy Technology program in July 2017. They're currently enrolled in the ballet program, class of July 2019. With 300 employees, the company has annual sales of over 70 million and is active in more than 30 countries globally, including 12 with PBE offices or partner distributors. It's headquartered in Southwest Virginia's Caswell County. PBE's recent, recent wins with international deals include Shanghai C Copper in China, Sydney Metro in Australia, and Brenner Base Tunnel in Italy. Please join me in congratulating the PBE Group on their selection as one of Virginia's leading exporters. If Krista Glassburn, PBE Group Chief Operating Officer, could please join me at the podium for an award. Thank you so much.